Okay, uh, this is for the analysis and design of returning structure that are related with the lateral earth pressure, the applications of the lateral earth pressure. Alright, so to analyze or to design the uh, returning wall, so for example, here we have the gravity returning wall, so we need to analyze the external stability of that wall. So that external stability, uh, including the overturning uh, factor of safety, the sliding factor of safety, and also the bearing capacity. Alright, so basically for the gravity retaining wall, it actually depends uh, on their own weight, right, for the external stability. And the following limit state should be examined, which are the overturning that the recommended FOS is equal to 2. But it depends on the requirements of the designs and requirement of the project. And then for the sliding uh, factor of safety, the recommended is 2.0. The bearing pressure, uh, FOS equal to 3. And also we need to uh, into account the recurrence of the tension in lateral joints, uh, basically for the masonry or the brickwork walls. And also the overall slip failure. Alright, so we look at the... Uh, overturning all right so that overturning is usually to assume the mode of overturning about the plateau as you can see here all right at the red point here so this is the uh, point of a uh, wall about to overturn okay so what 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 kind of pressure that will cause to the wall to overturn so basically it based on the active pressure here as you can see behind the wall we have the earth pressure so basically it is a active pressure and then the weight the weight of the wall itself and also if we have the uh, soil in front the front field of the wall so we will have the passive pressure here so that the passive pressure will resist the wall from overturn. So for the FOS overturning, what we have here is that the stabilizing moment, all right, the total of the stabilizing moment divided by with the total of overturning moment. Okay, so let's go through with an example here. So we need to check the stability of this returning wall. Alright, the soil is a silty gravel sand with a horizontal surface and there is no surcharge here. And the water table lies well below the base. So, in this case, that the water table uh, not take into account. And the soil property C is equal to 0. The angle of friction is 40 and the unit weight of the soil is 20. Alright, the soil properties uh, at the backfill here. Okay. And the concrete unit weight, all right, the concrete unit weight of the returning wall is 24 kilonewton per meter cube. Okay, so uh, all the dimension, all right, uh, already stated here. So based on this equation for the overturning, all right, so we need to identify the stabilizing moment here. Okay, as we know that uh, the pressure or the moment that will cause the wall to overturn is the from active pressure so now the rest including the weight of the wall itself okay and the weight of the soil behind the wall will resist the moment so we call it as a stabilizing moment so now um uh, produce this kind of table okay it's more easier for you to analyze uh, the moment and then calculate the fos Okay, as you can see here, what we have here are uh, the uh, W1. Okay, consider the weight of the component. Okay, so W1 and W2 is for the uh, retaining wall itself. Okay, so that's why for the column of the unit weight is 24. Right, 24 is the unit weight for the concrete. And then the area is based on the shape. Alright, so you have here is rectangular. So with the 0 0.3 and the, uh, the thickness here is 7.25. So that's why we have this area. Alright. And then how to get the force here is based on the unit weight here 24 times with the area. So you will have that this uh, force is 52.2. 
and then the level arm here okay as you can see here that the x one the level arm is the horizontal distance okay from the middle point or the center uh, point of w1 here okay to the point of overturning all right so you can see here that the 0 0.3 okay the 0 0.3 here okay so we divide by 2 and then we plus with another distance okay in order to reach this point a horizontal distance okay the horizontal distance so it's 1.7 then you will have 1.85 so then you can simply uh, calculate the moment by the force here gamma a and then times with the level arm here then you will have the moment value all right so complete for all the weight for all the component for example w2 here and then the w3 is the uh, the force the moment okay from the uh, backfill material here okay and if if you have the effect of the surcharge okay all right in this example there is no surcharge but if you have the effect of the surcharge we need to, we need to take into account the surcharge all right so how we get the moment for the surcharge so let's say we have another component all right so we label as a w4 here and then uh, fill in the value of the surcharge here and then uh, the distance all right so it based on the base size of the distance here okay all right okay here so it will start stop that point and then in order to get the force the uh, force kilonewton per meter so that q we times with the a the distance and then the level arm is is equal how we get it from w3 here okay same method and then we can get the moment by the Q times A and times with the level arm or the X here. Alright. And also, if there is a passive lateral of pressure that you need to consider, for example, we have the front field here. If we have the front field here, so we need to consider the passive pressure. Alright, so we need to consider the passive pressure. So that's why we have another table for the passive lateral of pressure so this is exactly what we have earlier in this chapter okay how we determine the active pressure and passive pressure so here if you have the front field if you have the front field here so we need to consider the passive pressure so calculate the kp then identify the sigma h by kp times gamma h and then don't forget to get the area of the diagram which is actually the passive pressure and this level arm x here okay for the lateral of pressure means that this is the the level arm x here all right for the passive pressure for the lateral of pressure here means that the h or the line of action okay the line of action all right so let's say here you have in the shape of triangular here so the line of action is h over 3 for the uh, lateral of pressure here okay for example h over 3 here and then you can get the moment by the pp here times with the level arm or the line of action here then you will have the moment all right so again in this example all right in this example there is no surcharge and there is no front field to be considered as a passive pressure okay but if you have the surcharge we need to take into account the surcharge and if you have the front field and mention that you need to consider the passive part so you need to include the passive part for the stabilizing moment all right that only the active pressure will cause the wall to overturn all right so the rest is for the stabilizing moment okay so now we already have the stabilizing moment from the previous slide so now we have the how, how we need to determine the overturning moment all right so the overturning moment okay 
what pressure that will cause the wall to overturn is only from the lateral active pressure. Alright, so now again, okay, we will use table. So this is exactly similar with what we have in the lateral pressure for the active. Okay, so we have the only one there is no surcharge in this case but then if you have the surcharge so you need to consider the surcharge okay all right if you have the surcharge again you need to consider the surcharge all right if you have the surcharge okay all right and then in this case there is no surcharge so what we only have is the active pressure here only one triangle shape here so determine the delta h okay the uh, horizontal pressure here horizontal stress and then determine the active pressure which is the area of the diagram so what we have here is half okay here is half times with the sigma h time with the h here all right the h here is 7.25 plus 0 0.75 okay and the level arm here is actually the h which is the line of action Okay, then after that, you can calculate the moment, which is the passive, oh, sorry, active pressure here. Alright, the active pressure here times with the line of action here, then you will have the moment. So, once you have all that information, so once you have all the value for the overturning moment, then you can calculate the FOS. So, FOS is for the total stabilizing moment. Alright. Yeah, and then divide by the uh, overturning moment. Okay, remember that if you have all the components, if you have all the component, if you have the surcharge, so we need to include the surcharge, and we also need it to include the uh, passive uh, lateral pressure moment here. Okay, and then get the total. All right, this one. This one and this one. If you have all the components. Okay. And then for the active lateral pressure. If you have the surcharge. Again, if you have the surcharge. So, you must include the surcharge. Maknanya akan ada satu lagi for the surcharge Q. Alright. And then at the end, baru you calculate the FOS for overturning.